Well, I suffered with literally almost every disease almost. I'm big believers on emotions causing a lot of our physical symptoms. And you'd go around here for 30 to 40 seconds. This is the best advice I've given to lots of people that have been skeptical. Is How did you end up focusing on the face and what took you on the reflexology journey? Well, I suffered with literally almost every disease almost. I had OCD, I had anxiety, digestive issues, and PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. And one in 10 women have that. So my tagline is, I help you push points before pills. Um, and that's basically because that's the journey I went on as well. Um, so in trying to find holistic alternatives, as opposed to just dosing myself up, which I did on medication and, you know, just band-aid solutions um i got i found facial reflexology and that's uh very rooted in traditional chinese medicine so basically we work on meridian systems and like acupressure points yeah it's rooted in traditional chinese medicine and vietnamese medicine so we work on different acupressure points and basically what that means is if i stimulate certain parts of the face that will cause a reflex or response in whichever corresponding organ or system that we're working on. It's always great when I work on clients and they're really struggling with digestive issues or sinus issues or reproductive issues, literally almost everything under the sun, there's a point for. Um, and then, you know, the next day they feel improvements and it's improvements that they weren't seeing with other methods. So I find that just very fulfilling to be able to do. What are the most common issues that can be easily fixed through reflexology? Easily fixed, I wouldn't say purely because it's a complementary therapy. And as you probably know, like holistic health is not just one aspect. So we, I do highlight to people the importance of diet and exercise and, you know, mind mindset as well, because we're um, big believers on emotions causing a lot of our physical symptoms. Um, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> the easiest fix. The easiest yeah. fix. Um, but the thing is, the things that can be helped the most with facial reflexology, or you see the quickest improvement with, would be digestive issues, would be anything to do with the reproductive system, um, the muscle pain, and also in the jaw. So we work a lot on the jaw as well, because that's connected to lower back and hips as well and sinus, sinus issues, any congestion or allergies like that, and anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. How can we start implementing this ourselves? So I say there's one major thing that I always talk about is the importance of your lymph system. So your lymphatic system and draining it because there's no pump in the lymphatic system, unlike the circulatory system. So it's really important that we move the fluid ourselves to helps with fluid retention and then also um, boost your immune system as well, right? So in order to be healthy, you really need a healthy lymphatic system. So I'd say the easiest thing is to go in the collarbones here and you just gently stimulate that and you'd go from the ears down to the neck. So you would just do this and you're basically encouraging this flow. Uh, we have many of our major lymph nodes and clusters around the um, ear which is why if you're ever feeling run down and sometimes you can feel a bit of swelling around the ear, that's a very sluggish lymphatic system. It means that it's trying to help you attack um, a certain disease or something that's coming your way. Um, and then you also have them under the armpit as well. And we have them around the body, but these are one of the, some of the main ones. So it's really important to just massage the area, really. Amazing. Yeah. How do you convince people to try something very unconventional? The best thing, and this is the best advice I've given to lots of people that have been skeptical, is you don't actually have to believe it to do it. Uh, you don't have to believe it to feel it. So if you're struggling to get to sleep at night, then you can either take the tool or the knuckle of your thumb, and you'd go around here for 30 to 40 seconds. And what we're doing here is we're really working via the nervous system. It's super close to the brain, the face. So that communication channel is very quick. Um, and you'll notice, no, in that instance, it's not going to just put you straight to bed, but you will have had the best night's sleep of your life, I can guarantee. 
And if you do have doubts, I do recommend checking out like the testimonial highlight on my Instagram page. Um, I've had a lot of believers over there that were skeptical at first. What's the best way to reach out? Um, on WhatsApp or via DM on my Instagram page. I'm, I'm the face behind that, so I see everything. Any advice on someone going through a healing journey? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say a key part on anything, anyone's healing journey is to really look inwards and, and really prioritize, prioritize sorry, self-care and self-acceptance because I think those two play a huge role in how we come about in our own lives. Like if you're struggling with um, mental health, if you're struggling with um, insecurities or shame or guilt and you're holding on to these things, they'll really manifest in your body. So it's important to connect body and mind. And these are great self-care practices that I teach you, you know, so that you can self-soothe and you can self-regulate your own symptoms and actually be in charge of your own health and well-being. How to be a good person. <laughs> How long we got? <laughs> <laughs> to be a good person. Oh, that's such a big question. Yeah. I mean, I think you go back to basics, right? You just kind of, it's more how can you, how can you be there? I think we're taught how can you be there for others? And yes, that's so true. But also how can you be there for yourself? Because if you're not filling your own cup, there's no way that you can give to anyone else. Um, and I think that can get misconstrued as selfish, but obviously there's a good balance there. Um, and also be kind to animals. <laughs> I think if you're a good person to animals, then you're a good person. What do you think is the difference between being selfish and self-love? Oh, I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> I know it's a tough question. It is a tough question. It's it needs some thinking question. about. Yeah. I don't think there is, um, when it comes to others, I think it's again, just that coming back to that ratio of like, what are, what are you doing? Where's your boundaries? And then like, what's a respectful boundary versus a complete no-go? And like, and how you're saying it as well. Delivery is very important. So if you're just kind of saying no to people because now the trend is, I'm going to say no more. And I do agree that people should do that. Um, again, it's just that balance, I think. But if you're talking about like self-care, um, practices that are misunderstood, I'd say like, I say a big thing. Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> this is such a big question. I don't even know. <laughs> I think, well, I don't know. Yeah, that's a, that's, okay. that's a different one. <laughs> Next podcast. Next podcast. Next podcast. Okay. Yeah. What's your biggest fear? I think my biggest fear is, uh, it's gonna sound so cliche, but dying without living. Mm. So that's kind of something that I strive to do um, in everyday life, if I can help it, is do all the things that make me feel good and know at the end of the day, you know, I've been a good person, I've done what I can to help others and I've filled my own cup. It's never perfect, but you yeah. try. <laughs> And how have you done so far? I think I've been okay. Yeah. Are you okay to go? Sorry? No, I'm not ready, ready to go. go. <laughs> I'm not ready to go. If you were to go, how would you feel? Oh. Dude, this got deep real quick. Just, just a basic question. <laughs> I mean, like at the end of the day, we're not even guaranteed like True. an hour. But if you were to go yeah. anytime soon and you knew that our time's up, yeah. You see it coming. Something's gonna happen. Yeah. And you just you can't avoid it. How would you feel looking back, like just with everything you have done so far, flashbacks and stuff and all that? Yeah, the big white light coming yeah, and all the nice. flashlight. Yeah, I think I'd be fine. I think you kind of have to accept and that's something I've learned along the way, getting to where I am now, is acceptance is a big part of the journey. Um, and it's something that's an everyday decision. It's an every minute decision because you can get hung up and resist everything, but it's not changing. Stop. But well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> that was a sign. That was, was a sign. Was was oh, you're awesome. Thank you.